The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the September 28th. Terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie. Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be a pioneer of our future versus a prisoner of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here today. And more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in right now, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, just put radio show question, and of course, inside the Tiger's Den. Well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on President's Cup Thursday. Of course, the uh, first group just teeing off. This is, of course, Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow up 41 points. She's trading out at 22,382. S&P is flat, up 2 points, 2509. NASDAQ 100 off 12. Russell 2000 up 2 points, 1486. Semis are up uh, 7 points, 6 tenths of a percent. New York Stock Exchange, uh, green, one-tenth of a percent the upside. Uh, Wilshire is uh, flat. We'll call the Trannies are up. Uh, they're not flat. They're up uh, six-tenths of a percent, up 56 bucks out there. Those of you that uh, like to believe that the transports, because I get emails from you. I track you guys. I get emails from you that uh, tell me that, hey, when the transports are moving lower, that says the Dow is going to have a major correction. So for those of you that say that, uh, guess what the transports are saying? That's right, that the Dow is going to move higher. Now, that's over time because we'll take a look at what's going on interday-wise. You've got gold up two bucks. That makes a lot of sense when we take a look at what yen futures are doing. Lightspeed crude is back 87 cents. She's trading out at 51.27. Leading the charge here to the upside, it is Loxo Oncology up 11 bucks and change or 14 percent. Bluebird Bio up 11 dollars and change or 9 percent. Uh, you got Madrigal Pharmaceuticals up 27 percent. So the pharma's on the move to the upside. Hmm, interesting. I wonder what they pay in the taxes out there. I wonder if that's an impact and why we're seeing those move to the upside. Amazon is up six bucks. BlackRock is up uh, five or nearly six dollars out there. To the downside, it's Dexcom Inc. off 22 bucks, 33 percent. Priceline is off nine dollars, a half a percent. Coherent is down seven bucks. Uh, here we go. Uh, beige Nay. <laughs> We, we This was to the upside the other day. B-E-I-G-E-N-E. -E. Somebody teach me how to pronounce that. Nonetheless, it's down 6%. Uh, Bale Resorts is down about 6 bucks. So we've got some things to look at, of course. I want to look at what you want to look at. The first request that came in was through the Tiger's Den, and the question was, was um, uh, are there any short-term signals in the past eight hours for the ESYM or the NQ out here? And by short-term uh, signals, I suppose I would look at uh, this chart first. I just have to find it. I would look at this chart first. And the short-term signals over the past eight hours are bullish, not bearish. And that occurred right at about the uh, 9.30 to 10 o'clock time frame when the Dow was able to move above 20 Dow futures, I should say, was able to move above 22, 263. Just simply got in the bullish formation out there. So the most shortest term signal, most shortest term, oof, 
I would definitely uh, get uh, get a uh, bad news bear there with regard to grammar. But nonetheless, as soon as the uh, Dow equity futures got above that level, got in line with all the other equity futures contracts. And so we'll strike that one up for the uh, bulls. We'll take a look at this. We'll do this in detail out here. Uh, the uh, Let's take a look at uh, the ES mini. There was one of the questions. So if I look at a 30-minute chart out here, is there anything to pay attention to? Yes, from the standpoint of we know where these sellers are lined up, right? And we know that just simply by utilizing our Japanese candlestick patterns out here. You can see a nice little key reversal session that occurred right at the close, 3.30 to 4 o'clock yesterday. So yesterday's interest session high, by the way, that is on the ES Mini, 2509.25 is a level of potential resistance out here doesn't mean you know back up the truck and sell or anything we're looking at a 30 minute time frame chart and uh, there's not anything that suggests that the ES mini is not going to go tag that so that's a short term signal that I'm seeing here is we're going to see a test of yesterday's high inside of the ES mini now if we just take a look at S&P market breadth out here uh, and we look at the 60 minute time frame, uh, the bears had a shot at it today, right? The bears had a shot at uh, 10 a.m. Because then we saw a bearish crossover. That's the red line going over the green line. That meant that at that stage, there were more issues trading below the 60 minute boxes below the low of the 60 minute boxes and trading above. So on a short term basis, 60 minute short term basis, that's where they really had, took charge. Now, we're still in that scenario. All right, so we're still in that scenario. Red line is still above the green line out here. So let's just come back to that 30-minute chart for you. Let's go switch this to a 60-minute time frame. Let's go figure out on a 60-minute time frame, what can we see out here? And here's the deal on the 60-minute time frame. Let's go take a look at, uh, let's do our wave counts to the upside. Just in wave count number five, I don't see anything there. I don't see a Tom DeMarc uh, count that uh, we would have to uh, worry about or pay attention to. Uh, there's not even at the high in a 60-minute basis resistance of a bearish reversal signal out here. That really didn't take place until 3 o'clock this morning, and price is trading above that level, about 2505 as we speak right now. So even though market breadth is still in what we'll call bearish mode out here, leaning bearish on a 60-minute time frame, it still looks to me like price wants to get up and test yesterday's high. Now, if we switch over and look at the four-hour time frame, 240-minute uh, time frame out here, uh, this is still in uh, bullish uh, territory. If I take a look at a 240-minute chart for the ES Mini, it's bullish. It's shorter term message yesterday uh, turned bullish when the price oscillator on the four hour time frame got right down to the zero level. That was at six o'clock yesterday morning. You can see how Stevie's red line has continued to act as support on a four hour time frame. You can also see how the bottom of the TAS market profile in the 2492 area also held as support. So uh, you do have the little shooting star out here at yesterday's high inside the market just says it's going to go ahead and get tested. Price gets above it. That's just another leg to the upside out here. So in summary, this says the highs of yesterday are going to be tested. Doesn't tell us whether it's today. Says they're going to be tested. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, uh, folks. I'm told that, uh, that uh, Troy Andrews, also known as Trombone Shorty, is going to be playing in the uh, Clearwater area tonight and down in South Florida tomorrow. You know how you can attract things into your life? You may remember, for those of you that are longtime listeners out here, last week I, uh, uh, the reason I wasn't with you was because I was going to a wedding slash, whoops, that was interesting, wedding slash golf outing up in uh, Nantucket. And we left on uh, Wednesday, uh, even though they were forecasting that uh, Hurricane Jose which was really more like Tropical Storm Jose, you know, could put a, a damper on things. And sure enough, when I did land in uh, New York, uh, the text message came in and said, hey, your flights are canceled. And so we had to spend at least that evening, turned out to be more than one evening, in uh, New York City. But as I looked around for things to do, oh, what a beautiful town that is to actually be uh, stuck in. And uh, when Korea does its thing out here, oftentimes we'll, I'll mention the name Korea, and then what pops into my mind is Chick Korea. And just so happened that Chick Corea and Steve Gadd were in town in uh, playing at the uh, Blue Note. So I did go catch that uh, show. I did that on Thursday. Uh, Wednesday, I actually went to see uh, Hamilton. Got found some really reasonably priced tickets out there. And now I understand why that is the, uh, you know, the talk of the town, so to speak. Actually, really cool, um, really cool play. I'll go back to it. I don't want to pay, you know, big big bread for it, but it is definitely worth uh, uh, going there. Yeah, so that uh, so the Steve Gadd uh, um, Chick Corea concert was just uh, was just fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And the guy that I sat with was the, um, oh, shoot, because the U.N. was in town, he was the ambassador to uh, South Africa, which was kind of cool because I had spent time in Basil's country out there. And so, um, you know, we had uh, that to chat about as well as a number of other things. Also went to a uh, very cool, you know how I like sake out here. Well, Desai is one of the breweries that I absolutely love. In fact, if you're ever, you know, at a Japanese restaurant and you see Desai 23 or 39 or, or 50 or something like that, it, it'd be worth uh, getting out there. It's a very good, very good bottle, very good value. They happen to have a uh, bottle of sake that I always wanted to taste. I've just not willing to pay for it. In a restaurant, they charge about two grand. You can find it um, at uh, some different retailers for between six and 750 bucks. And so, you know, when you go to a wine taste, you're not sure if you're just going to get a tasting or not. And so I 
reached out to my contact in uh, Japan, and and uh, she said, by all means, just just come. We'll meet you at the door because we couldn't get tickets. It was a private event out there. Which I did, and let me tell you, it's and it's called uh, it's called uh, the name of the Desai sake is called Beyond. Well, they weren't giving just little sips. I myself drank an entire um, bottle, at least an entire bottle of that and some other things. And that's what we did before we got to see the Chick Korea concert. So needless to say, there was no drinking at the uh, Blue Note going on. But then it was just, it was, just, was kind of surreal because every now and then I'll say Chick Korea on, on the show here. And there I was sitting in uh, front of uh, Chick Korea. And then we had to hang out in, uh, in New York because the bride and groom were stuck in high with a lot of the wedding party because they were going to go ahead and take the ferry boats over and those things weren't running because of the waves and everything so it was really there were about two supposed to be 200 people that made it to the wedding there was not 200 people that made it to the wedding in fact the interesting story wasn't this uh, wedding but there was another wedding where the uh, bride uh, invited um, this was on a plane. She had made it over there on, on a plane, and she was the only one in at the entire party that uh, invited everybody on the plane. This is not a plane I was sitting on, but it was somebody else. And she invited everybody to come to the rehearsal dinner because there was not going to be anyone else there. It was pretty pretty wild out there. In any event, uh, let's go back to the uh, marketplace but um, uh, and see what uh, see what we have. So uh, hopefully I've, I've, uh, I've given you a, a decent feel with regard to what the short-term charts are communicating. Too much like yesterday, right? We took a look at the NQ as an example yesterday, and you and I were able to give at least your initial price projection of where price was headed to once it took out that level. Um, you know, it went up to the next area. I think it was the... It was around this time. So it was the we said, hey, price is going to go test uh, test the 59.33 area. Well, it more than did that. As you know, we just use these same set of tools. So let's use those same set of tools, so to speak, and go take a look at you know what's going on inside the daily charts out here. I'll just take a look at several of the indices over the course of the next three minutes, and I'll go ahead and check my my email, see if there's any requests out there. Let's take a look at the semiconductor index out here, the SOX. We gave you a figure yesterday that said once price got above Stevie's red line, which you can see that it did, that that was a bullish signal. Now, for those of you that are short the semiconductors, I have bad news for you. Well, some bad news for you. What's going to occur out here is the highs are going to get tested. They may get taken out. You can see a nice bearish engulfing candle that is set up out there. We're trading almost, and I think we are trading into the swing point high. Don't know whether it's with volume or it's not. And just simply getting above Stevie's red line said you're going to go back up to the highs. That's what it's going to do. I got the memo on it. I'm just trying to relay that memo to you. Is it going to take it out? You know, I'm such a big believer in uh, Basil's work that the answer has got to be it's got to at least take it out by a penny in order to get to that uh, fourth uh, wave count letter D out there. So that's what's going on inside of the semis. I think I, I had Basil show on in the background while I was trying to eat and prepare for the show. And I think he was saying even something about uh, he's not interested in it right now using a different set of tools. Maybe it was simply because of that third wave to the upside. I don't know. Uh, and then he said, hey, I'll take a look at it once certain things unfold. Well, I think that's the certain thing that he is looking at out there. So that's the semiconductors. No bear markets are going to form with the semis up at new all-time highs out there. Just end of story. Not going to happen. Hey, even in the transports, we talked about those earlier, not going to happen. You've got the uh, transports now, which had formed a really nice Gartley buy pattern. Uh, in the end of August, you now have the A to B equals CD pattern that's unfolding. Uh, this will continue to move, even though the next price projection is the one to two level. That's 10.009.86 or 98.92. That doesn't mean that price has to stop there. And even if it does and there's a retracement or a pullback, that doesn't mean that's the end of it for the transports. But one thing is certain. With the transports up at new all-time highs, there is no major top inside of the Dow anytime soon. And by anytime soon, if you want me to define that, at a minimum, 12 weeks. A minimum, 12 weeks. More likely, 25 weeks. More likely, even more than that. But at a minimum, 12 weeks time. And if you don't believe me, that's okay. But I'd say go do the work yourself and compare the transports to the Dow, and uh, you will see what it is that I'm talking about.
If we take a look at the uh, volatility index out here, the cash spot index, uh, what is it doing? Probably headed back down to the uh, bottom of its uh, Bollinger Band out there. The current reading is 949. You're at 978 as we speak right now. There's no reason for it to not do that. I say that, though, without uh, checking in on what's the spread between the spot VIX index and the furthest out futures contract. So I better do that. As we do that here, I've got a chart on it. That is going to be the uh, September, no, the uh, June, I apologize, June of 2018 contract. And uh, that just came active a few days ago. Um, and yet even this, uh, what I look for is a spread between the spot and that. You're at 977. The uh, June contract is 1705. It needs to be an even larger spread before some type of short-term top is formed. That's in your S&P 500. See, Broach with TFM will continue doing this lesson. Some questions that have come in by. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming. See high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, 1,045 S&Ps up a couple. So let's keep on uh, going through these uh, charts here. Let's take a look at the XAU uh, is our uh, next stop out here. So we take a look at the XAU. You can see the nice little butterfly top that it formed out here. Um, it is uh, looks like it's got a uh, trying to form an A to B equals CD to the downside out here. That would actually give us this type of uh, shoot. Didn't mean to do that. Sorry about that. I uh, kind of messes things up. No problem. I will unmessify. There we go. 
That's right. I forgot to change out the uh, software on this. So here's your likely A to B equals CD to the downside inside of the XAU, getting you all the way back down to the 7853 area out here. Let me put this back up here. It may, now it makes it nice and pretty. Um, now it has not crossed the B point yet, so uh, this is this is subject to it being able to take out the uh, swing point. The swing point that we're looking at is from the trading session of September 21st. So just out of curiosity, um, let me just take a look at the GDX out here and just compare volumes uh, at that swing point level, so to speak. And that swing point we're dealing with is September 21st. 39 million shares was taken. Yeah, that's confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside uh, because it was taken out yesterday with 49 million shares out there. So um, and inside the GDX, the A to B equals CD pattern looks like uh, this. It's your A point, your B point, your C point. That's giving you a price projection of about uh, 2133. That's going to take you back in the swing point from early July. And then you'll be able to use as a benchmark the volumes there as that level gets approached. If it's less than the $50 million range, which is what you, 50 million share range, then uh, that's giving you what it is you want to see. But at this stage here, uh, GDX, XAU, they're headed lower. Now they're taking a little time out as we speak. And, and it's not just a one way market out there. They're taking a bit of a time out. And that's simply brought to you by courtesy of the uh, Japanese yen. I don't have that on this chart here, but oh, I, you know, you asked about Mr. Z. You had asked about short-term charts and just the ES and um, the equity futures contract. But there was really the biggest uh, short-term uh, chart signal that there was was earlier from actually gold. You know how we like to watch for a price to move lower, do with less relative energy, wait for the cavalry to arrive. And that's what took place at 2.30 this morning. Now, I know that you were probably up. You were probably noticing that. And you had a nice little piercing candle that formed. You like to see that. You like to see a bit of follow through or something that doesn't eat back into the body of that candle. That's really, what really took place up until 3. And then you can see that price started closing above Stevie's red line. You don't think this red line is important, do you? Take a look at it on the 30-minute basis. You can see where it was tested, even at 10.30, even at the 11 o'clock time frame, and held. You know, is there much higher to go in uh, gold? And the answer is, yeah, maybe. Surely, I can see that. Um, I can see price get up to 12.92 or so. But really, what I would do from here is just take a look at uh, market profiles, to see if there's anything, any tells there. And in order to do that, I think I go right here, okay. And now we've got a 60-minute time frame. And the 60-minute time frame suggests to me that Goldilocks should make its way up to 1293. I don't remember what the number was. I maybe gave you 1292. And that's, I'm looking at, I'm focused on the 240-minute time frame, which you can see prices with inside that box. That box is structured from a bullish standpoint. It occurred over the last eight hours out here. Uh, and that says that price should be able to explore that area. And also at 1295.90, uh, that's the bottom of the daily box. That should be the extent of any bounce inside of uh, gold. Of course, it's all going to be dependent upon your friend and mine. And that is the uh, Japanese yen out here. Uh, so you can see how the Japanese yen is trading higher. Gold is trading higher. Everything is basically in sync out here and uh, the bearish uh, outlook doesn't change unless the yen were able to close above stevie's red line then we'd have to take a look at what does that mean until that happens it means nothing because it hasn't occurred just yet so that's what's going on inside of the uh, yen that's what's going on inside of uh, gold and in essence that's what's kind of going on inside of the xau the gdx as we take a look at those let's go back to those daily charts out here see what other messages we can uh, glean uh wilshire 5000 we don't talk about it often enough but certainly as we take a look at it you can see how it is held support of that oscillator and change line out there uh, so that wants to go ahead and go to higher ground higher ground in it as an a to b equals cd to the upside uh, that would take us into since it's already at the one to one 26320 is the uh, next level that it'll want to attack as long as it stays above stevie's red line if we go take a look at the New York Stock Exchange out here, let's go see if there's any signals here. And price is beginning to move higher due to less relative energy out there. So that means we want to pay attention. 
and we want to pay attention if, in fact, it forms some type of bearish reversal signal. It doesn't mean a thing unless it ain't got that swing or something along those lines, and that swing would be some type of bearish reversal candle. It's not there today, likely not to be there today, could be there tomorrow or the next day. We won't know until we actually see it. But when we do see it, we will know. Stevie's red line priced at 12,144.40 out there. So this thing is in bullish mode. Figure that we're going to see a seventh wave move out here. It's only in wave number six. If we go take a look at the, um, whoops, didn't mean to do that, but let's uh, go take a look at the, oh, the NASDAQ 100. Let's take a look at it, see what it is doing. Now, in the case of the NASDAQ 100, struggling. No doubt it is struggling out here. In fact, yesterday was one of those struggles that says, eh, I don't think so. I am not willing to resume the number one position of leading this market higher. It was a clear message out here. Boy, what a beautiful day they're having in New York. Just blue skies. Hey, it was great last uh, week as well. In any event, uh, I got one eye on that and the other eye on the charts for you. But take a look at how price ran up, hit Stevie's red line, and then ran back down. So the NASDAQ certainly is the struggler here. Does it mean that it's going to trade lower? Or how low could it go out here? You know, only if it were to take out the swing point from two, three days ago out here, will it really become some type of problem. But it certainly is not uh, the uh, style of the market that you want to see from an all-out all bullish. Now, obviously, I'm just reading the charts for you and giving you their signals out here, but where it's simple to call what's the message of the markets at 1.37 in the afternoon. I cannot control what... Uh, but the guys in not Chick Korea, but the real Korea are doing out there or anything else. Uh, but what we can do is we can take a look at the charts to be able to identify bullish, bearish, neutral out here. And with regard to the NDX 100, uh, neutral is the uh, call. But we do know resistance 59.5509. If you were to see a close above that, that'll switch from neutral to all out bullish. But that's not the way it looks as we speak right now. Now, that's with regard to that message there. Uh, if we take a look at it um, just for the heck of it, let's do it. And for more than just the heck of it, that was a daily chart. And here's where you've got your divergence, so to speak. And the divergence says, hey, not so fast, Stevo. You've got the uh, market breadth positive out here, green line above the red line. There are 36 issues trading above the box, 24 below the box. Hence, an easier call to say neutral, not bearish. Just struggling to get above this, just just wanting to rest a bit. And I suppose that's a result of Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Google, and the like. Steve Rogers, TFN. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan 
Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced that he'll be coming to Boston September 30th for a free workshop, The Art of Timing the Trade. Join Tom O'Brien Saturday morning, September 30th at the Boston Marriott in Burlington, Massachusetts as he breaks down his trading methodology and provides you with the tools to become a more successful and profitable trader. Everyone that attends in person will receive a free signed copy of Tom's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. Daryl Martin from Apex Investing Institute will also be presenting for 90 minutes at this free event. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. Join me in Boston on September 30th as I return to my hometown for a workshop about the art of timing the trade. I look forward to seeing all the tigers and tigresses for this special free event. All action starts early at 7.30 a.m. with a continental breakfast and wraps up at about 1 p.m. Topics that Tom will be covering during his presentation include quality volume, cause and effect, ABC structures, swing points, and much, much more. For all the information on this free Boston event taking place Saturday, September 30th, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back. Uh, quiet day out there. Must everybody uh, must be watching the uh, President's Cup or something. Uh, light on the emails, light on the requests out here. So let's just go ahead and continue on. Take a look at some of these uh, daily charts out here for the uh, various indices. Let's uh, take a look at the uh, Russell 2000. Now, yesterday's bar, also referred to as a wide-ranging bar, and you know, you know what happens with regard to wide-ranging bars. Markets don't end on wide-ranging bar. Therefore, today is no end in sight for the Russell 2000. You did get a nice little, we talked about this yesterday, TD sequential count inside of the cash indice, the Russell 2000. That happened a couple days prior inside the Russell 2000 equity futures contract out here. Um, look, the Russell 2000 will continue higher until we see it close below Stevie's red line. Pure and simple, end of story, only in wave number four out here, wide-ranging bar, this wants even higher price. We took a look at the A to B equals CD to the upside. I'm not seeing any topping pattern inside the Russell 2000 anywhere. So what once was the weak stock uh, now is in the number one position out here. Russell um, 2000 outperforming the 1000 out here. Everything looks uh, hunky-dory and will until we see some type of at least short-term topping signal for some type of uh, pullback out here. But at this stage of the game right now today, for the TD sequential count to give you a uh, bearish signal, you have to close below one, two, you have to close below about 1450, give or take. I didn't get you the exact price out there. And um, this looks, uh, looks very strong, especially yesterday's candle session. Was that a blow off top? Absolutely, positively not. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, Dow Jones Industrial out here, uh, you're going to see that today it's trying to regain its footing by getting above Stevie's red line. The number in the cash indice is 22,003, looks like 62. Yeah, 22,362 and change out there. If you close above that, then in fact, the Dow is going to go ahead and make a new all time high. Now, we have enough information with regard to the transports that uh, suggest that that's going to happen. That's already in the cards out here. If you're looking to short the Dow, please don't do it until it goes ahead and makes a new all time high out there. And if you're shorting it, I hope what you are is an intraday trader, not the old back up your truck traders out there. Let's say the top is in and then we're going down to 666 inside of the S&P 500. Not in any of our lifetimes out here. This market's going to continue to move higher out here. And inside the Dow Jones, you now have the number to write down on your pad of paper. If you see a close above it, you'll know that the high has not been had yet. You're going to see another new all-time high inside of the Dow. And that's really the information, as we say, coming from the transports, coming from the semiconductor out in DC out here, coming from the Russell 2000. The messages are just simply 
all over the place. If we take a look at the uh, S&P 500, we really didn't do that. We looked at the uh, uh, spot volatility index. It's above Stevie's red line, got above it yesterday. You know, it's going to go ahead and make a new all-time high. Maybe it's going to go and try to, I don't know what it's going to do. It's just, uh, well, we took a look at the S&P 500 price target and projections levels yesterday, right, when we looked at those horizontal trading ranges. So we already have the numbers for that out here. So that looks nice and bullish as well. Um, and a uh, question that was posted, is this rally high take us into November 20th? And it may, it may, it may, it may, it may, it may not. I would say a date that will live in infamy. Now, it probably won't live in infamy, but the date I'm focused on and paying attention to is October 10th. I don't even know if that's an actual trading day. I should see calendar-wise, is that in fact an actual trading day? Uh, go back to my calendars because it may not be the 10th. It is. That is a Tuesday. So I have my eyes glued on Tuesday uh, versus a uh, ECM uh, date out there. But I, that is duly noted out here of the uh, of the uh, Martin Armstrong economic confidence model date out there of November 20th. But uh, a pretty decent chance that the markets are going to at least rally into uh, mid-October out here. Now, so that takes care of at least all the indices that I track. If we take a look at natural gas, again, without any real questions coming in, just kind of going through. These are charts that are in, in my expanded edition of the newsletter every day. We don't go through them very often here on the show, but you know, it's being kind of a quietish type day out here. We will. Here's your natural gas contract for November. November out here, just kind of chugging forward. But we're seeing this thing is making higher highs and higher lows. Until that changes, it looks like natural gas wants to continue to move higher. You'd like to really see it stay above my red line out here. 303 is the uh, number. But nonetheless, just the simple higher highs, higher low pattern that we see inside of natural gas. That is the November contract. If we look at, um, let's look at some of the ETFs. How about that? Let's go take a look at the ETFs. How about the XLK out here? Even with the uh, NDX 100 struggling, well, the XLK also struggling. 58.78 is the number there. Just like the NDX 100 struggled at Stevie's red line, so to the XLK. But you get above, close above, 58.78, you're going to go tag 59.17 at a minimum. Those would be your price targets out here. And support, 57.73. Nothing wrong, even if it goes down to test that level. Not Nothing wrong inside the XLK. Healthcare sector out here, uh, I did make a TD setup nine count yesterday. Uh, so that could be the extent of the retracement that we have seen. Retracement, I don't know, it looks like a 0.382 to 0.5 type of retracement down to the bottom of a TAS daily profile. If the XLV v, 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 can get above or close above 82.11, that's Stevie's red line out here, then back off to form a new high out here, maybe an A to B equals CD to the upside. But it does look like the decline inside of the healthcare sector is over, both with regard to market profiles as well as that TD setup and nine count, often the times where you'll see a reversal in trend. And that's what you've got what appears to be going on today. Inside of the XLF, the financial sector made a nice little Gartley buy pattern out there. Did that when it had that gap to the upside back in early September. Uh, do we see anything bearish about this? The answer is no. A nice little true doji candle yesterday, but uh, with the uh, trees not falling off the leaves, meaning price is still a tad higher than yesterday's doji candle. This looks good. Looks like it wants to move to higher ground. And staying about 2534, that's what will occur out here. That is your financial sector inside the S&P 500. One of the sectors here that has been clobbered a bit, the XLP, uh, what is it doing? Well, yesterday it also made a TD9 count out here. Um, so uh, this could uh, see a move into the 54.46 level, but it still has a lot of work to do. It needs to clear 54.46 as step one if this thing is going to find a bottom out here. If it doesn't test and rejects that level, well, you know, it is more downside action inside of the XLP. If we take a look at the industrial sector out here, the XLI, 
what is it doing? Nice Gartley buy pattern that it formed. Do we see any kind of topping action? The answer is no, we do not. Looks like it too wants higher price out here. So what is it that we're seeing sector-wise that's going to go ahead and pull the S&P 500 to the downside? We actually haven't even seen it yet. We're kind of going through waiting by waiting by waiting out here. The XLY, uh, this looks uh, pretty decent. Um, looks pretty decent out here. I don't know. Uh, yeah, looks like all I can say is looks pretty decent. Uh, nothing to write home about. How about that energy sector? How about that XLE out here? Looks like it may have formed a bottom. It has higher prices to come to over the coming days. If you're looking to open your portfolio to a world of opportunity, consider the new market safe emerging currency CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to five equally weighted currencies from Brazil, China, India, Indonesia, and Turkey at a time when experts see great potential for global growth. Even better, it features a 7.0 leverage factor, which means you could earn a potential market upside payment of seven times the CD's performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance. There is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. The September 28th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA, FSB, member FDIC. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Uh, folks, uh, Joe writes in and asks if I could take a little bit further look into the semiconductor uh, indice out here. I'd mentioned on our daily chart in that uh, second or third segment that uh, yesterday's move above Stevie's red line said it's going to go back and at least test its highs, uh, maybe take out its highs out here. So if we go take a look at it uh, and we try to figure out different price projected areas or resistance, um, here we have our three time frame horizontal trading range charts out there. You try to say that just one time slowly. The left hand side is the uh, blue one. So the solid lines are what we'll call the significant resistance or support areas. And, and if I have some dash lines out there, those are the midpoints. Actually, it's only the monthly that I have the dash points in. Let's start with the monthly, because if the semis are going to bust out to the upside, and this is the end of the month, it's not today, but it is near, it would be tomorrow. 
would be the end of the month out here. Um, the key level of resistance for it is 1175. We haven't hit it. We've been very close to it. But you'll see, again, those solid lines out here are the real key horizontal trading range levels. If you look back, way on the left-hand side of the chart out here, you can see how, and it really is, these are formed based upon the body of the candle. We don't say the body is the essence of price just for the heck of it. it it is at least with regard to our computation the wicks or the shadows upper lower on each of these candles nothing more than just the extreme uh, emotion of that trading session in this case here happens to be monthly trading sessions but these HTRs, PTRs, however you want to refer to them, they're all formed based upon the body of the candle. And the uh, largest uh, number area of either opens or closes came in between the price levels of 373 and 640, 61 on a monthly chart. 1175, if you see price close above 1175, says price is going to go ahead and run higher. If it doesn't, doesn't mean that's the end of it. It's kaput. It's over. No, not necessarily. It's just resistance. The weekly chart, as we take a look at it is in fact trying to bust out now on a weekly basis to higher ground to say it wants to get to 1254. I hear the music. That's the end of the show, folks. Stay tuned. Your favorite polar bear in mind, David White's up next after that. Tom O'Brien, 3 to 5. Andy Heck from 5 to 6. I'll see you on Fantastic, Fabulous, maybe Saki Friday. Take care. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.